today's uh, talk is called Whoa, Wait, What? And um, I'm really not thrilled with my subhead. Can you believe what I just read on the internet? Because I think that uh, we're all aware that uh, the internet is full of factual um, uh, uh, fallacies, <laughs> um, lies, um, uh, propaganda, um, and so uh, I think it's kind of one of those, well, duh, um, statements. But I want to take it a little further. Uh, so we're going to start off today by taking a look at a couple of um, recent headlines that showed up in my Facebook feed. And I'd like to hear you tell me some of the first words that come to your mind when you have a look at these. So first words when you see this particular, oh, I guess I get to use this clicker. I'm not used to having a clicker. <laughs> and I have to turn it on too. First words. Baby. Pregnant. Kids. <laughs> okay, reactions. Let me hear some reactionary words. Ow. Ow. Wow. Wow. Aw. Aw. Okay. All right. Guess, does anybody want to say lies? Anybody else think about that? Yeah? Yep. Did you say lies? Yeah. Yeah. Lies! This is a website that po popped up in my news feed, um, and it was a little, it had sponsored content. It's over on the right hand uh, area where it said sponsored content, which made me also kind of go, hmm? Why is a news story being sponsored? When I click through this, um, it looks like it's coming. Where does this? Where's the source of this information? Look like it's coming from. E news. E news. Guess what? It's not. It's a knockoff website. And every time I click on something on this page, you know what it takes me to? Advertisement for some facial products. Not kidding. Um, no, not true. How about this? It says. Cancels World Day of Prayer because it's too Christian. Removes his shoes to kneel before Allah in a mosque. This is your Muslim president, America. I knew it! I knew it. <laughs> we got him! Caught red-handed. Pardon me? Yes. What else? Keep it classy, right? The comments can kind of tell you a little bit about what this probably is doing, right? Totally not true. We could very easily look up World Fair Day of Prayer. Um, this was posted January 1st, the World Day of Prayer. There is actually one, but I think it's in May. Um, and I don't think that this was anything recent, and it was probably based on the visit that he made. Um, how about this? Johnny Depp was in town. Original, yeah, you know, what's your thoughts? I thought was. Reaction? He's from Owensboro? Reactions? He looks sick. It's Johnny Depp, come on. Don't insult him too much. You're gonna hurt me. So this is where I wanna start digging a little deeper. I want to take a look at this, and I want to point out, this says Johnny Depp spotted at an East Side Sushi restaurant. January 27, 2016. This post got 7,300 likes, 5,100 shares, and 1,378 comments. Several of those shares and likes came from some of my friends, and it popped, that's how I came across it. And my immediate eyes went to this, the Tri-State Beat. Have I heard of Tri-State Beat? The Tri-State Beat, I click on it, and it takes me to what it says is a news media website. Oh, good, good. So, all right, 
verifying this information. Johnny Depp's probably in town, right? I can go to eat sushi with him. I can go stalk him. And then I start looking and I'm like, wait a minute. Who spells beat, B-E-E-T, when we're talking about news? News beats are usually B-E-A-T. And really, is their logo really like a root vegetable? So I start thinking, what is this? So I click through, oh, and I didn't get to it. I forgot to, to put my, my about page. The about page on this, if we were go, to go here, the first thing it says, and I wish I had it pulled up, I forgot, I was doing this late last night. Um, the page says that this is a satirical website and that anybody who believes anything that is written on here is obviously an idiot. <laughs> A local satirical website. Don't get caught by the tri-state beat. So, why does anything I'm gonna talk about today matter? First, being able to tell the difference between good and bad information could be the difference between you keeping your job and not keeping your job. You're not able to determine when somebody is pulling your leg, there are some mistakes that you might be able to make on the job that could cost you that job. You can save a lot of money by not falling for false advertisements and spending all this money on these beauty products that they say work miracles. You can make better decisions about your health. There's always a new drug company. There's always a new drug that's being introduced and pushed very heavily. Advertising and drug by drug companies is crazy, and it's not always really all that obvious. This is one that's near and dear to my heart, and that might make everybody fall asleep, but it does inform you as a citizen and a voter, which I might argue actually is one of the most important things. And let's just face it, it prevents you from making a fool of yourself. So Speaking of making a fool of yourself, let's hear, hear some more arguments. When something happens, I like to think of the most likely cause instead of the most emotionally rewarding. I like to think the most likely cause is the one that makes me feel more powerful, important, and safe. It's possible, but is it probable? Critical thinkers are too afraid to believe in the wondrous and improbable. I try to avoid wishful thinking and self-deception when coming to a conclusion. Avoiding self-deception is impossible, so I don't fight it in my pursuit of truth. <laughs> Are you stupid? Yes. No. Yes. No. If you answer yes, odds are you're really smart. Smart enough to know how stupid you are, and that's a very good start. There's hope for you. Here's some tips to sharpen your thinking. Who is critical thinking for? Everyone? <laughs> Not by a long shot. Critical thinking is for the elite few who choose to use the tools of critical thinking. It's not for pussies, not for intellectual cowards, it's for truth seekers as opposed to personal comfort seekers or right fighters. Critical thinking? Critical thinking? Critical thinking? Sounds good, but what's in it for me? Sounds good, but what's in it for me? Critical thinking is for people who want to be adults as opposed to children, want to be sober as opposed to drunk, and seek clarity in understanding rather than wallow in an intellectual fog. Basically, critical thinking is for responsible people. People who fly our planes, drive our buses, write our laws, run our country, run our businesses, teach our children, raise our children, vote. In short, everyone. You. Everyone. You. That's what we're going to talk about today. It's not just about critical thinking, it's about how we apply it to the information that we are exposed to. Some of you might be thinking, oh, finally, I was, they were right. That crazy uncle of mine who's constantly telling me I can't believe anything that I read in the media or read and from the liberal media or from the, from the conservative media, she's telling us he's right. No, nope, I'm not telling you that that's right. You can trust some media and you can trust some reports. Today we're going to learn which media reports you can trust and how you can apply some critical thinking 
to determining what is true and what is most likely not. Today, we're going to learn about the whoa, wait, what? This is that first stage, that initial, oh, Joni Depp's in town. Oh man, look, Kate Middleton's, she's expecting twins. Oh look, look what Barack Obama just did. Your initial reaction to news that surprises you. That exclamation point is there for a reason because we all usually just go, whoa. So we're gonna be working on this throughout the day. So I wanna hear you, we're gonna talk about the initial reaction. So we're gonna practice together. We're gonna all say, whoa, with the exclamation point. Ready? On three. One, two, three. Whoa! whoa. I wanna hear it much louder than that. One, two, three. Whoa! whoa. Yes. the put on the brakes moment. This is called the wait. Before you get crazy and click share or retweet, I'm asking you to take a pause. Just like the lowly punctuation we know as the period, which is used very frequently indicate that we're going to stop our thought to move on to the next one. I want you to find that space between and use the pause. Find the power of the pause. Take a breath while you gather your thoughts. So now I want you to say with a little bit of, oh wait, I think I just embarrassed myself kind of tone. Wait, right? ready? One, two, three. Wait. Kind of draws it out, right? The last one is the what? This is the most critical part of this equation. This is the moment where you are going to be asking questions. And you're going to ask this very important first question which is, wait a minute, is this true? The pause is gonna lead you to the what. All right, let's say what? One, two, three. What? All right, try that again. One, two, three. What? That's right. Okay, let's take a look at some things. So, this one, all right. What stage are we in? Whoa. Oh, come on. What stage are we in? Whoa. Tragedy in Hollywood. This is over in my Facebook area as well. Note, again, sponsored. I was like, hmm, wonder what this is about. I was only clicking on it, by the way, because I was preparing for this session. Otherwise, I would have completely ignored it because I really am sick of Brangelina. When I click through to this, um, I end up on this website. Where am I? People Web, People Magazine. Okay, so Angelina Jolie, Okay, it's been going a long time. Do I believe any of this? Wait a minute, I start looking around. Huh, okay, get people now, get the four free issues, Entertainment Weekly, all these other time incorporated network um, publications, except when I scroll down the page, suddenly I am no longer seeing what looks like People Magazine. What am I seeing? Yeah, or is it just a one? Is it a mini advertisement? It's just for money. They quote Angelina Jolie. Allegro. They're quoting Angelina Jolie. Do you think she really said that? She uh, I doubt it. I highly doubt it. When I click, first of all, let's take a look. Our hearts go out to Angelina. She recently sat down with E! online for an interview to discuss her personal beauty habits. Wait a minute. I thought we were feeling sad for her. By the way, I don't have this screenshotted, but up on the URL and the little tab that shows up in my Google Chrome, you know what it said? Angelina rushed to hospital. What? That doesn't match this story. What is happening here? I thought this was about them ending their marriage. So suddenly our hearts go out to her, but let's talk about her face. 
shall we? Because that's all we really care about. She shared with us her beauty habits and favorite serums. Find out how a goddess should treat her skin. When I click on the URLs, I end up finding out that it goes right back to this page. Every link on that page led back to this page. I wasn't able to go to the home, I, wouldn't able, I wasn't able to look at videos, photos, anything. And when I looked at the URL, it was deceptively not People Magazine. I had to look up in the search box. I had a lot of clues going on though, all right? So, this stage was the, what stage was I in? Wait. 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 And this stage was the, what? Oh. Again, I had some clues when I saw sponsored content. And the other clue, suddenly they are still trying to be very deceptive. And they were, work, they were trying to be clever. They made it look like it was the Daily Mail, which was a, is a, a British tabloid. So they did make it look like it was legitimate. But that doesn't match the people. So they basically stole a bunch of images and put it on a website to sell Allegro skin cream. Human leg found in Ohio River near Henderson. This was posted July 5th, 2014. What is this? What stage? Let's hear it. Whoa! All right. What do I need to do next? Wait a minute. Something strange was found along the banks of the Ohio River in Henderson on Friday. The Henderson County Coroner's Office says dock workers found a leg Friday afternoon around 1.30. The two leg bones did not have any flesh, although a shoe was still attached. You didn't know we were gonna talk about celebrities and human bones, did you? Um, uh, so, the first thing I think, huh, well, I'm looking at the source. I would like to know who's reporting this. Is, is this true? Because that's the way. Is this true? So I look at the source, and it's WDRB.com, which I'm not very familiar with. And so I start looking around on this website and start clicking around, and I find news anchors, and I find that they have an address and contact information. And I see that they're in Louisville. I'm like, oh, they're a Louisville TV station. Okay, all right, this looks legitimate. And it makes some sense that a Louisville TV station would be reporting on a leg in the Ohio River in Henderson, because it's in the same state. Okay, I'm starting to go, maybe this is true. Um, but I still want to know, how come DRB is the first one that I'm hearing this from? I want to know, is anybody local reporting this? So I start by um, taking a web search approach where I just think I'm going to look up the Henderson, Kentucky newspaper. I'm going to go to the, the site. I want to know if anybody in the media in Henderson, Kentucky is reporting it. So I search for Henderson, Kentucky newspaper and the first thing that pops up is the Gleaner, which I'm very familiar with. And when I go to the Gleaner, and by the way, I don't have to do much more because if this had just happened, if there's a leg found in the Ohio River in Evansville and Kentucky between Evansville and Henderson, it's going to be on the front page of their website. So I'm not really going to have to dig around. I shouldn't have to if that's the breaking news out of there. And I find out that yes, in fact, authorities said a leg was found in the Ohio River Friday afternoon, prompting a search for other possible body parts. So my woe, wait, what paid off because this is an actual story um the next uh, fall a few months later this pops up in my feed and um i i have a very clear memory of being on vacation when i saw someone share this on facebook and i think i was sitting outside on a beautiful day and i just immediately went what do you think i said whoa, whoa. Um, you see that headline and wow, that's something, right? So I need to go to the what because, hmm, I don't know, boy, you'd think I would have been getting a lot of push alerts. Like my phone would have been blowing up. This would have been a national news story, right? My AP, by the way, I say push alerts. You can subscribe to news organizations apps and they will just send you news all day long. So, you know, you're like, how would I know these things? You gotta go looking for it. You have to make it happen for yourself. 
So I start looking at what's happening uh, here and the first place I always look, this is your lesson for the what part. The first thing you do is who is reporting this? Seeing a pattern here, we go to the top. Empire News, I've never heard of that before. Evansville's not that big. I know I can name the newspaper here, I can name the radio stations, I can name the TV stations. I know about Tri-State Beat now. Um, so I don't know who Empire News is and why is no one else reporting this? So I go to the about page for Empire News and it says, again, step number two, about pages. They're a thing. Empire News is a satirical and entertainment website. We only use invented names in all our stories, except in cases when public figures are being satirized. My commentary on this <laughs> is that, to me, satire really should be funny. This is just lies. I don't understand Empire News. I have seen many, many, many things shared from them. I never, ever laugh. Not like I laugh when I see something from the other satirical website that I know very much about, was a popular satirical national website. The Onion, right? Although since Univision took over, I've not been laughing as much and I'm starting to get a little suspicious. Um, that's just in the last few weeks. But I laugh about that satire. This is just made up. The thing that I noticed in the story, they kind of had a funny name for the sheriff. Oh, ha, ha, somebody has a funny name. I'm not sure that that's considered satire. So again, Empire News, looking at the top, this is who we know. This is what we know is happening. Um, this was tweeted, in, not just tweeted, WTHR in Indianapolis. It's a television station. They take user submitted photographs during winter weather events, you know, like Jeff Lyons does. He's like, send us your photos of the, of the winter weather. Um, and we might share it. This was in 2013. Someone submitted this and said, here's the tornado that went through Lafayette, downtown Lafayette, Indiana. They shared it. But this photo, when you start looking, first of all, you're like, I don't think there was a tornado that was that close. Secondly, there's a, oops. My red didn't pop up very well. There's a UFO over the church, and Bigfoot, you can't see very well, but Bigfoot's walking next to the church. <laughs> this is the original photo on the left, and this is a Photoshop photo on the right. THR Indianapolis shared the photo. They made sure some, um, a, a viewer or a journalism, I think it was a journalism critic, actually discovered this. And uh, it was Jim Romanesco, who I uh, adore. Um, and he started talking about how this had been discovered. Um, and the THR immediately said, well, we didn't take the photo, we just shared the photo. I wouldn't accept that excuse from my students. I'm not gonna accept it from a television news station. Again, you have to look for deception. People are trying to deceive you. And they might be doing it completely innocently. There's really nothing other than a big chuckle that they can get out of the fact that their photo went viral with the UFO and Bigfoot in Lafayette along with the massive tornado. That didn't hurt anybody, apparently. Um, but we have to pay attention to where our information is coming from, who's reporting it, and we have to use our own minds to discern whether it's true. So, here's some things to look for. <clears throat> Keep an eye out for things like sponsored content. Also, promoted content. Um, anybody go to a website, uh, websites where you scroll down and you'll see like six blocks of photos and they're all really grotesque. There's always like somebody's really just we're seeing fat rolls or something you can't quite tell what it is. Um, and it's like, learn the cure for such and such and such and such. And then you realize it's just all really offensive and it's on a funny be on a news website. And you also realize that the headlines cut off. It's like, and you won't believe what happened next. That's clickbait. 
those are promoted, if you look, there's a word and it says promoted content. You'll see um, one's called Outbrain, and actually the Courier and Press uses Outbrain. Um, and I know I've got some Courier folks here. Um, I'm really grateful for them to be here. And they're doing that because we need money in our publication. And so Outbrain says, hey, you wanna get some clickable content on your website so you can get more users? But I think we're all catching on because it's the same content that I see on the CNN website and all these other publication websites. Look for that. That is not produced by that organization, by that news organization. Look for sponsored and promoted content and for clickbait. Headlines that cut off and are like teasing you, just daring you to click. They're gonna count you as one of the clicks. Look for manipulated photos. Heavily edited, edited video and audio. You might think, wow, I'm not gonna believe it till I see a video. Um, there was a girl a few years ago, a couple years ago, who was like supposedly set her bedroom on fire or something after twerking or something. Do you remember this story? And uh, it was a promoted, it was a video, and it turned out it was a Jimmy Kimmel joke. Like he revealed it weeks later that he had he had helped this girl's video go viral because she was like twerking in her bedroom, and then she ended up setting the, the place on fire. And then he showed the whole video, which previously he'd cut it off, and the first thing. Uh, you see after she's the candle falls over, <laughs> you see Jimmy Kimmel walk through the bedroom door. He, so he basically was trying to teach us all a lesson. It's like, you cannot always believe what you see. You not, might not be seeing what is real. If you see videos on news websites that are using music that seem to be eliciting a certain kind of emotion. Is it trying to make you angry? Is it trying to make you sympathetic or sad? That could be the, used to manipulate your emotions and it might not be coming from an objective point of view. So although we might enjoy it as entertainment, we need to check it out to see if it's actually true. I want to give you a some tools. I tell my students all the time that they're not going to leave my classroom without tools in the toolbox. You are in school to fill your toolbox. And I hope that you have to buy a bigger toolbox. And I hope that you have to invest in data space to save your toolbox. We are all responsible for the information we encounter. And it takes remembering these things so I would recommend that you start using bookmarking, a bookmarking tool, maybe on Google Chrome. Um, if you have some place where you save websites that you refer to, I have one at the top of Google Chrome that says, it's a folder that says fact checking. The first four that are in that folder is my favorite website of all time and it's Snopes.com. How many of you know about Snopes? Oh, I'm going to weep. And now I'm going to celebrate because now you know what Snopes is. Anytime your crazy uncle posts something on social media, I talk about crazy uncles because I got them, okay? Uh, anytime your crazy uncle posts something on social media about Barack Obama and his whatever, you know, that he wants to do to our country, although he's sure taking his time doing it if he's gonna do it, he's gotta hurry up. Um, you can take that headline, whatever it is, the headline, just copy it, you know, drag it, highlight it, copy it, go to snopes.com, stick it in the little search box. Up, go, up is going to come a list of results that most likely is gonna show you this is false. It determines whether something is true or false and it looks to see how many times, you know, where it's been shared, where the origins are. Um, snopes.com, write it down. By the way, if you wanna remember some of this, I recommend you take a picture of this slide. This is how you can start building your toolbox. Don't just think you're gonna remember that. You're gonna like, what's that weird word? Wait, why is she talking about Snape? Snopes, okay? Find it, look at it. They can even show you the most popular like false rumors that are being, or the stuff that's being circulated. It's crazy season in America, uh, otherwise known as presidential election. And some of my favorite sites for this time of year 
are three fact-checking websites that look at what presidential candidates are saying and find out whether, and trying to determine whether or not what they're saying is actually true. One's called factcheck.org, one's called PolitiFact, and one's called, is on the Washington Post website, it's the, the fact checker on their site. Um, after every debate, or actually during every debate, they're live tweeting and trying to fact check in real time. And afterwards, they will post an article that will say the top 10 things that were said at last night's debate, we fact check them. And you can go and you can see the history. That crazy image of the Lafayette tornado. If you don't see the UFO, or Bigfoot, who by the way, I had to really look for, it was kind of a Where's Waldo photo. They didn't do a very good job of making him obvious. <coughs> Maybe that was the point. Um, but you could take an image, and if you're wondering if it's been manipulated, well, did you know that those all your photos have all this digital information? Every time you take a photo or a video or you create something on the internet, there's all this metadata at the back end of it that you just can't see. Kind of telling the computer how to keep track of all of this stuff. That metadata comes with photos when you download them off of the internet. And so you can go back and you can reverse search a photo. So if you're wondering if a photo's been manipulated, go to Google Image Search. When you go to Google Image Search, you will see the search box like you see on Google. Just if you don't know how to go to Google Image Search, what am I gonna tell you to do? Google the Google Image Search. It's our friend. There's a little camera that sits right there inside the search box. When you click that camera, a drop down comes and it allows you to drag and drop a photo into the box and it is going to reverse search to see if that photo has what that photo's origins are. You can determine maybe if there's another version of it out there and where it was first reported. So reverse image for, uh, searches. There's one called 10 -I. Um, I haven't had a ton of success with it, but I think that it's being built up. I keep hearing about it at conferences. I think that it's getting stronger and stronger. Um, this is becoming so much more important in the age of user-generated content. In breaking news situations, for example, in perhaps a school shooting situation or another, a tornado, we're always, people are always taking photos and putting them up on social media, and media organizations are having to decide do we share this? This is, this looks legit, but how do I know? And so these kinds of things can help because there are those jerks out there who during a crisis are putting fake photos and false information, calling into talk shows and getting put on live on CNN. There are people who mess with the media during a crisis. Use those tools. Now we're gonna go a little bit deeper. First of all though, I wanna review. What are our, what's our process here? So I wanna hear it all in order, ready? I wanna hear it, one, two, three. Whoa, wait, Good, okay. So one of my favorite um, questions to ask a student when they found information, or anybody actually. This isn't for students, by the way. There are plenty of adults that need to hear this very thing, and including those crazy uncles, right? Um, Howie Schneider at the Center for News Literacy at Stony Brook University, a conference that I went to a couple of years ago where I really, this just really lit my fire about this topic. He asks students, what neighborhood are you in? When you're encountering information, you need to know what neighborhood that information came from. And I'm telling you that sometimes you're in a bad neighborhood and you need to get out of there. Here are the news neighborhood or the neighborhoods that he lists. News, opinion, advertising, publicity, entertainment, raw information, user submitted content, things that you're seeing pour in over Twitter, right? Propaganda. So ask yourself, wait, well part of that whole wait what is to ask what neighborhood is this coming from? A few deeper questions. Does the story match the headline? 
So now we're going to go beyond looking at where the information is coming from, and we're going to take a look at the actual story. If it passes the smell test for the URL and the about page, it doesn't necessarily mean it's good information. We have to go deeper. So we have to look at the headline and we have to ask, well, what the story says and the headline, do these match? Is the first paragraph supported by the details in the rest of the story? Does the story answer the five W's? What are the five W's? Don't get it confused with, well, wait, what? What are the five W's? And the wow, right? Um, <laughs> The five W's and the H. Are all of those represented? Here's a big one. I'm going to introduce a word. Verification. Is it verifiable? Does the story give you enough clues, breadcrumbs, where you would be able to pick out certain parts of it, take it into Google, and start looking for it? Like the source's names, or um, an address, or um, you know, looking at a Google map to be able to tell, is this building next to this building? Speaking of sources, here's a new tool. First of all, I don't know if any of you have been introduced to the Credible Hulk, who's my friend now. Um, this is really good for uh, not only English papers, but also in journalism and as news consumers. The Credible Hulk always cites his sources. So if you have a story that doesn't have any names in it, there's a big red flag that's they're just waving it in your face, saying, this might not be true. The test for sources is something called I'm vain. Sources should be independent. There should be several of them, multiple sources. They should be verifiable. I can look up. It says in here that I'm an instructor of journalism. It says in here that I am the advisor of the student publication. It tells you that I am all of these things. You should be able to go to the USI website to verify that. Don't take my word for it. Look for the original source. Is it verifiable? Sources should have authority. And when we talk about authority, this means what? in the world is this person doing in this story? What did they have to do with it? You need to think about this when you're actually writing stories too. I need to talk to people who are actually affecting this story and are affected by this story. So if they have a title and it, they're an expert in a certain field and it relates to the story, that makes sense. If there's someone, if we're talking about a tornado, if there's someone who is, uh, who was lived through the tornado, um, then we need to be able to, see, we need to know what their name is so that we can fact check to see, oh yes, they do live at that address. They're not just somebody who's pretending. You know, there's a, I can't remember the name of the documentary, but um, there's a, I think it's called The Woman Who Wasn't There. There's a woman who made, um, a lot of television appearances who said that she was in the Twin Towers on 9-11 and she went to groups of people who'd lost people and people who'd lived through the tragedy and a journalist found out that she might not have been who, not, might not have been who she was saying she was and went and investigated and found out she was never aware, and she was not even in New York when it happened, but she had made this incredible show of having been a victim and a survivor of 9-11. So we have to make sure that people are in, um, have some authority and they actually are who they say they are. Um, they need to be informed. So if you talk to somebody or if a publication quotes someone saying something that doesn't make a lot of sense, you need to be able to judge that. And they need their names. Uh, I want to take a little moment to bring up uh, the B word. And I didn't know where to fit this in, but I felt like I had to talk about it. Um, this is what the uncle talks about all the time, is the bias in the media. And first of all, let me just go on the record as saying I don't believe in the media, even though I study it and I am, I've been part of it. There is no singular the media. Um, 
There are people who practice media, but uh, we're all not taking our marching orders from one place, and we all cannot, um, there's just no way we'd be all be able to collaborate and, and, and pull off something of the magnitude that we're accused of all the time. But people throw around the word bias very loosely. In fact, I hadn't heard it yet this year, but it showed up on Yik Yak, was it Yik Yak, I think, this week, about the shield so biased. Why is the shield so biased? And I'm like looking back at the last three issues. And although we did do, there was a controversial sex issue that they did a couple of weeks ago, um, I really was like, I don't think that falls in the category of bias. And last week we were actually talking about Yik Yak, which is really meta. Um, Yik Yak is now talking about us, so it's just kind of like we're in a loop. Uh, so you're talking about Yik Yak. I just couldn't, I cannot figure out why the entire publication was being thrown under the bus under this word of bias, unless they're just disagreeing with my opinion editor who was just talking about he paid $1.68 for mac and cheese. I'm like, okay, is that bias? Is everything in there bias? Uh, so let's look at some definitions just to get it out of the way. When people say the media is biased, let's, let's look at what that would actually mean. Media bias is a pattern of unfairness or willful inaccuracy over time by a specific journalist or news outlet. It cannot be proven by a single isolated incident. A news outlet could publish a story where it was missing some significant input from sources that needed to be asked about that story. But that doesn't mean that the entire publication is biased. That one story might have had some bias, and it could be biased by omission, which means, yeah, we did try to contact that source. They didn't call us back, but we forgot to tell the reader. We did make an attempt. So that's called transparency, by the way. I like to talk about audience bias. <laughs> um, the tendency of individuals to see bias in news media reports because they are unconsciously viewing journalism through their own biases. People tend to say something is biased when they read something that they don't agree with. And that is so very different. Words matter. That distinction matters. Am I judging this piece just because I don't like what it says? That's the pause that we all should take when we start going down this road. Um, and then we can go one further, and that's the where we only seek out sources that help us reinforce our strongly held beliefs. We are looking for somebody to affirm and confirm our belief. And so we're only going to follow those people and publications who publish content that we agree with. Again, we're getting to the difference between news and opinion. News is looking at information objectively. No skin in the game. Just trying to step back and say, what do you say? What do you say? What do you say? Okay. You all said this, I need to find other people who say something that's different. So what do you say over here on this side of the room? You're gonna say the left side of the room's better, you're gonna say the right side of the room's better. Oh gosh, I'm gonna to have to have somebody weigh in on this. So I'm gonna to have to find somebody who has, doesn't care about the left or the right side of the room, who's not sitting on those sides, and maybe <laughs> studies this issue, and they provide us an outsider's viewpoint on this big left versus right side of the room debacle. So, bias. Know what you're talking about. All right, I'm gonna rush through these really quickly, but I just wanna make you aware of them. And this comes from something called Think Like a, New a Journalist from News Trust. Um, the News Trust seems to have disappeared and I haven't been able to figure out what happened to them. They were a great organization and I just need to do some more digging. But they came up with the four Ds of thinking like a journalist. And they apply this not just if you're going to be a journalist, but if you're an audience member, you need to think like a journalist. And the four Ds are doubt, which is being healthy, healthily skeptical. I love the phrase, be a skeptic, not a cynic. You want to question everything. 
but you don't want to just doubt and just um, say, I don't believe anything. I don't believe anything anybody says. Because we can't. That's going back to the whole, oh, they were right. I can't trust the news media. That's the cynic. The skeptic just says, that second part, what? Wait, what? Right? Detect. Develop a nose for news and relentlessly pursue the truth. If you see something that you think isn't right, just keep looking for it till you find the answer. Discern. Look for news reports that include fairness, balance, and objectivity. You want all viewpoints or as many as possible in the story. You want to talk to experts, consider the motives of people who are speaking, try to discern which side has more accuracy and maybe pre and present the information as best as you can. And objectivity. Presenting the world as it is, not as you wish it were. That's what objectivity is. We can't bring in our own thoughts and apply it to the news. We have to look at both sides and weigh the evidence. And, and we have to accept the answer. Lastly, demand. Demand the free flow of information. This is what we're built on. It's what this country's built on. Even during crazy season, with a presidential election and a presidential candidate who says he loves the poorly educated. <laughs> yeah, I bet you do. Um, we have to demand that the, our information flow freely, and then we have to defend our First Amendment rights. Can somebody tell me how many rights the First Amendment defends? How many? Very good. I wish I had a candy bar with for you. Can somebody name the five? Let's so let's do the first one. Okay. Re press. Assembly. We already said religion. Petition. Oh, you guys are good. You are so good. Yeah, give yourselves a hand. That was awesome. I actually didn't know whether to ask that question. Um, Part of the demand is also to demand that your media do better. They do better by you. As I wrap up, I want to um, give you a little bit of advice on what you can do um, aside from the whoa, wait, what. Um, it takes a little more than just only judging what comes through our news feeds. It also requires us to purposefully seek out information. We've been talking about this very passively. And make no mistake, you have no choice in this. You cannot be passive when it comes to information. I am asking you, as new ambassadors of news literacy, to actively seek good information. One of my favorite books, Blur, um, by two great journalists, points out that we are becoming our own editors, our own gatekeepers, and our own aggregators. <coughs> the things that are in your newsfeed on Facebook and Twitter, you asked for that. If you don't know who's running for president, if you don't know what's going on in your town, it's no one else's fault. It's your responsibility. If you want to know, you've got to follow the local newspaper and television stations. You've got to follow news media that you trust. And I'm not saying that they're all, you can't lump them all. You can't just say, oh, CNN's great and everything they report's great. No, we're going to use whoa, wait, what for everything they post. But you have to actively seek out information. Your friends are going to be posting kitten videos and, you know, America's Funniest Home or America's Funniest Home video videos of people doing stupid stuff. If you want to know what's going on, don't rely on your friends or the adults in your life. It's up to you. You are your own editor.
You make the choices about what goes in your newspaper every day, because Facebook and Twitter are where you are. Instagram, I don't know where else you are. But wherever you are, so on social media, you have to make those choices yourself. Be your own editor, go out, be ambassadors for good information. And if you ever need me, I'm here. Um, I have some recommended readings, Blur and Unspun. You teachers, this is for you. There's also one called Asking the Right Questions, I believe, Guide to Critical Thinking. Please take a picture of this if you like, and I'd be, I'd be happy to provide this PowerPoint to anybody who asks for it. If you need me, reach out. You can find me on Twitter, you can email me. Um, and teachers, I'm gonna put out a new one, so I tell you, you want me to come and talk about this? This is where I start my mission now, is creating more ambassadors uh, for good information. So I'm, I'm available for booking, so. Thank you very much.